Whether you call it picking up stitches, picking up and knitting stitches, or just knitting up stitches, today I'm going to show you how to acquire those new live stitches along the edge of a finished piece of fabric. As always, if you'd like to jump directly to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. So when you're picking up stitches, there are a few things to, to think about. Some of the things you have to consider are whether the fabric is being, the new fabric is being worked in the same direction as the existing piece or perpendicularly. Uh, the rate of, of stitch acquisition, how many stitches per row or how many stitches per existing stitch do you need to pick up? How do you know how many stitches you're supposed to end up with? Or if you know how many you're supposed to have, how do you make sure that you're picking them up um, in a way that you'll end up with the exact number you need at the end. We'll be talking about all of that today, so let's get started. When you pick up along a horizontal edge, like a cast on edge or a bind off edge, you're going to pick up through the center of existing stitches in the last row. You're not picking up underneath that bind off chain you are picking up through the center of the stitches. So here I have, here I have the stitches on a project needle, um, which you can do, but I do find that sometimes makes a gappier join than if I use a smaller needle. So what you're looking for is the V of a stitch. So you can see that the two legs of the stitch form a V and you want to insert your needle directly through the center of it. So you have the stitch through the center, now you're going to knit it. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, you're going to wrap it like you would normally around the needle. And pull the stitch through. So now you have a new stitch on the needle. If you hold the yarn in your left hand, again, you would, you would go down through the center of the stitch, through to the back, grab the yarn, and pull it through. Now some people find this difficult to do, so you can introduce a second needle. So what you could do is insert the left hand needle through the center of the stitch. And now you have something sitting on the needle that's sort of like a stitch, so you can just knit it like you would normally. Just stick your working needle through there and work it like a normal stitch. Some people will find that an easier process to do than um, to just stick the working needle through only. A third option is to use a crochet hook. So again, you would stick your hook right through the center and then you would grab the yarn and pull it through. And at this point, you would either transfer it um, to the needle like that, one at a time, or you could do them one after another. So you could use it to, the hook to go through, grab some yarn, bring it back through, make sure that you don't split it, go to the next one, grab that one, and just, just keep loading them up on to the hook and then once you have a bunch loaded on, you can slide it to the other end and then offload them onto um, the needle. So With vertical edges, you're going to be knitting perpendicularly to the original fabric. And you can encounter different, very different row gauges depending on the type of fabric you're working. So this is garter stitch. We're going to talk about that later. First, we're going to talk about picking up stitches along um, the selvage of stockinette fabric or fa fabric that's very much like stockinette. It might be some sort of knit pearl pattern that has a very similar gauge to stockinette. You still have those three choices of how to bring the new stitches through um, the fabric to the front of the work. But rather than inserting your needle through the center of an existing stitch, you're going to insert it between the selvage stitch and the second stitch in. So you're going to insert your first one as close to that cast on edge or bind off edge as you can. And that's where your, your first stitch is going to be. So 
So now we're going to look closely at these edges. So you can, if you have trouble figuring out where the selvage stitch ends, you can look for the, the column of stitches that's the second stitch. So this has been pulled apart a little bit. That's why it's so, the selvage stitch is so far from the second column of stitches. But you can see how there's little boxes. There's those little holes um, with, that are separated by strands of yarn. Each of those little holes represents a, a row. So you're going to insert your needle through one of those holes in order to grab a stitch. So you look for a hole, you insert your needle through it, grab your yarn and pull it through. Now, because you typically have more rows per inch than stitches per inch, every so often you're going to have to skip one of these openings. So I'm gonna skip the next one and go in through here. So the um, rate at which you skip depends on the gauges and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Slanted edges are formed by shaping decreases or increases and they should be worked not in the edge stitch but a stitch or two away from the edge so that you leave your salvage stitch um, just a one column of plain stitches going all the way up and the process of picking them up is the same as through a vertical edge. You find that um, gap between the selvage and the second stitch in and you pick up in those openings. I have 16 stitches I cast on and I worked for 32 rows. Um, and two rows of garter stitch produce what, one of these ridges that you see here. So with 32 rows, I have 16 ridges and it, pr and it produces a, a square fabric. So you can pick up one stitch for every ridge along the edge of garter stitch fabric. Now you can pick up between the selvage stitch and the second stitch in um, as you did for the other fabrics. Um, you can pick up and then, then you end up the inside rather than that chain of selvage stitches you have these bumps that stick out. But another method is to pick up within the edge itself. Because garter stitch is a reversible fabric, it allows it to continue being reversible even when you pick up stitches. So here I've picked up stitches along this edge um, and then it's a reversible fabric. There's, a, there's a, a ditch here on this side where here you don't have the ditch, but that's the nature of garter stitch. The way you pick up along an edge, the easiest thing is to use a, a small double pointed needle or circular needle and pick up all the way along the edge. You can see how the bumps have, are kind of a trio of bump. There's like, there's one bump here, one bump here, and then at the top, like a little pyramid, there's this bump and it's this top bump that actually wraps around both sides. Each of these other two are really confined more to one side of the fabric than the other. So you find those little trios and you insert your needle through those bumps. You can find there. And you just thread your needle all the way along those bumps. So now I've got all um, 16 bumps threaded on my needle and now I can join my yarn and just work across. On the horizontal edges, it's very typical to pick up one stitch for every stitch. So if you have an edge that has 16 stitches that were bound off, you'd pick up 16 stitches. On vertical edges, the ratio, the number of rows per inch versus stitches per inch is usually about two stitches for every three rows or three stitches for every four rows. It really varies. So what you can do is you measure the length of this. This is, I measured this earlier. This is four and a quarter inches in length. And my stitch gauge is five stitches per inch. So I need to pick up 22 and a half stitches, which obviously I can't do. I can do 22 or 23. So I can use the idea of two stitches out of every three and um, do that all the way across and then see how many stitches I actually end up with. You want to make sure that you always work in the last 
space of a row. You don't want to have that be one of the places where you skip. So I do have 22, um, managed to get 22 stitches here. If I actually wanted 23, when I work across that very first row, I could just increase a stitch. But for something long like, like this, where I was decreasing every right side row, so it's pretty frequent, um, the length of this slanted edge is going to end up being quite a bit longer than the vertical edge. So for example, here I have a four inch long vertical edge, but this is five inches long. So if I were picking up 20 stitches along a vertical edge, that would not be enough um, for a five inch slanted edge. I'd need more stitches than that. So you need to, to keep that in mind if the slant is, is quite long and the rate of decrease is pretty frequent. Okay, so what if you need to pick up a really large number of stitches, like you know how many stitches you have to pick up, but it's just so many and, and trying to figure out how to do it evenly is seems really difficult. What you can do is, we're gonna pretend this is a long edge, is you can divide it into quarters or halves or eighths, and then you, know, you could use a marker or a piece of, of um, contrast yarn or something, and then figure out, well, how many stitches do I need in each one of those sections? So that as you're picking up, you can kind of tell as you're nearing, nearing one of those markers, do I need to slow down my rate of, of, of pickup or maybe increase it a little bit? The other thing you can do is if you come up with, well, I'm, I need 12.2 stitches for each of those sections, just make it 12. Count up how many you have at the end and then increase um, evenly across on that first row. But for button bands, when you're picking up along a vertical edge, using that two to three ratio or even the three to four ratio isn't really always the best um, method to go around it because ribbing can pull in and sometimes using those ratios will result in uh, cardigan fronts that kind of are dis uh, distorted. So next week I'm gonna talk about strategies for picking up stitches for button bands. In the meantime, if you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or you can join the discussion over in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks, and there's a link to that down in the description box. I have a playlist for my series on picking up stitches, which you can link to up there. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you can hover over my face here and then click on the subscribe box. If you're on a mobile device, you can just tap my face and then hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.